Greetings, friends, here in Kathmandu, Nepal. Getting a haircut, a shave, and a massage. These guys from Bihar in India, they're professionals. It's probably going to cost me a max of four, $4. Why should I try to shave myself when I have it done for so cheap? And escape the insanity of these streets for but a moment. I was reading from Mark chapter 6 this morning. In that chapter of Mark's Gospel, it tells us how the Lord Jesus called the disciples unto Himself and then sent them out two by two. When He sent them out, He told them not to take a bunch of extra things, only to take what they needed, not to take an extra staff or an extra coat, but to trust God to provide for their needs. And if certain places or certain towns didn't receive them or their message, to shake the dust off their feet it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the Day of Judgment than for those places. And then my attention was snagged by what was written thereafter. It said that His disciples went out according to their Lord's command and preached everywhere that men should repent. And it struck me that that's a pretty simple strategy for missions to preach everywhere that men should repent. We see, of course, that strategy lived out by our Lord Jesus Christ Himself. He was a preacher. Some say He was just a teacher and that He went and sat and hung out with uh, tax collectors and sinners and failed to keep reading in that passage. Yet Jesus was hanging out with the tax collectors and sinners, but He wasn't affirming them in their lifestyles. He was adjuring them to repent. In fact, the Pharisees questioned him, why are you hanging out with publicans and sinners? He said, I didn't come to, for the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. So Jesus was hanging out with the sinners, and he came to call them to repentance. We know he too was preaching repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that Paul the Apostle did the same in Athens, a place wholly given to idolatry, just like this city. Paul told the people at Mars Hill, they were too superstitious and that God in times past had winked at their idolatry but is calling men everywhere to repent because the day is coming when He'll judge the world in righteousness by that man whom He hath ordained and the proof is that He rose, he, he was rose, risen from the dead the Lord Jesus Christ so as you'll see in the following video clips our strategy here in Paul our mission strategy it's not complex we don't have a complicated platform or some multifaceted strategy. Our approach is simple. Like Jesus' disciples sent out two by two, we endeavor to go everywhere preaching that men should repent. I don't understand why missions has to be so complicated. I don't understand why the gospel has to be so over-contextualized. God already contextualized the gospel for us. After all, Conscience, a witness of God's law and a witness to our guilt is on the heart of all men. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. General revelation, creation, the curse of sin, the conscience has been given to all men. It is clearly seen in every culture. And the gospel message provides the answer to the bondage of all man-made religion, to the bondage of all sin and depravity. So as I see it, God already contextualized the message for us. Why change it? So our strategy here in Nepal is simple. We endeavor to hit the streets, to preach the gospel, to call men out of their idolatry unto repentance, that the glorious light of the gospel may shine in their hearts, and that they may taste the freedom from false religion that is in Jesus Christ. As you'll notice, we have great freedom here, it seems, to preach the gospel with boldness, to call men to repentance, not only near their temples, but in their places of public gathering. You see, they are hungry, they will listen. Friends, we're not mincing words. You can't understand the poly, but trust me, we're not mincing words. And then after the preaching, they clamor for scripture portions and gospel tracts. 
It's a simple strategy. It's an age-old strategy, and it need not be complicated. Missions is about preaching the gospel. It's not about settling down and making a comfortable life for yourself here in a foreign country. That's called the way of Balaam, making a career out of a call. Are we worried about getting kicked out of this country? No. We're not running the risk of that. We're not doing our job as heralds of the gospel. But so far the Lord has been very good and I hope these preaching clips that follow will be an encouragement to you as you see the hunger that is in the hearts of men. And as you see the gospel preached in the open air. As you see people listen, sometimes more than a hundred at a time. As you see people clamor for copies of the scriptures. Pray for us as we endeavor to continue printing tracts, scripture portions. As you can see, we can print, print, and print, and print, and never have enough. Soon we'll begin carrying a cross around this city. We endeavor to walk around Ring Road that encircles the entire city, a distance of about 40 to 50 miles total, I believe. A little bit at a time, carrying a cross that asks a very simple question. Nepali, are you ready? Using the opportunity created by the curiosity to preach Christ. Friends, that's how we're going to do it. It's not because we've got a new strategy. It's just by reading the scriptures, following the example laid down for us of old. Jesus' disciples went out two by two. It says they went everywhere preaching that men should repent. If you call yourself a missionary, if you call yourself a witness for Jesus, and you're not calling your lost friends to repentance, then not only are you a horrible friend, but you're disobedient to the commission the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. I would urge you to repent. I would urge you to be bold. I to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because, my friends, God commands us to be filled with the Spirit. And Acts chapter 4, verse 31 tells us what that looks like. It says that the followers of Jesus there in Jerusalem, after they prayed against the persecution and requested boldness from God, it says that they, the place where they were gathered was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Then it says they went out and spoke the Word of God with boldness. In these last days, it doesn't matter where you are or the nature of your calling. What matters is the Gospel message that we must be bold. The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. May these clips that follow encourage you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. We cannot do good things. We cannot bring life unless there is life within us. When God created us, He created us in His image. We have a body, we have a soul, we have a spirit. God created us. But, remember, God is not like man. He doesn't need to repent of His actions. He's a spiritual being, far above all things. Taki uma mati, biswash garni, koipani nasta nahos, Tara Usle Ananda Jivan Paos. Pero Sati Aru Yi Kora Sakyaho. No, Chimekuma Jimebar Nuncha, Kitabe Abno Rasta Kumagi Kora Jimebar Nuncha, Echudi Shosnus. If it's Hatsi Tarapin Mani Sununcha, Mopani Mani Su, and Mirapani Adikarta, Topikapani Adikarta, and the Kunipani, Kunipani Dabar China, and the Sodas and the Shotan Trotho. And the Polish only, as a Hamila is Shotan Trotho. 
Sapaiko lagi chan. Sapaiko lagi chan. Allah, the Balan Yamsa. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? But then the Madonna, he, my little Bato Samate, or the Pesimo Yazanzu, my director of Kam Goregusu, Ras Goregusu, after that, or even I was to suit the Banagosu Masor Gazanzu. About the Nile Matanara, the Pacha, the Pacha, the Pacha, the Pacha, the Pacha, the Pacha, Ma Mati, Biswash Gonu Parsa, Yeshule Bonobayo. Yeshule Bonobayo, Ma Mati, Biswash Gonu Parsa. Biswash Gonu Pardena Bone, the Piper Pop Ma. And he preached that he was the only way to life. Jesus the Messiah preached that religion cannot save you. God is holy and righteous. We are wicked, filthy sinners. We must repent. But that means to turn from your sins. To turn and forsake your sins. Instead of worshipping and loving your Creator, you love these idols. 
My friends, I love you. मेरे साथी रहो मैं तबले प्रेम करती हूँ। I don't know you, but I love you. मैं तबले चिंदी ना बैठ के दूर माता रहूँगी मैं तबले प्रेम करती हूँ। I love your people. और यहाँ का मानसिक ले मैं प्रेम करती हूँ। And I love your country. तब मैं को देश ले मैं प्रेम करती हूँ। But more than that, I love the God who made you. तेरे तीन बंदे बड़ी मत्तो परमेश्वर ले प्रेम करती हूँ जस्ते तबले बनाऊँ भाई। And I love the God who made the Himalaya. मत्तो परमेश्वर ले प्रेम करती हूँ जस्ते हिमाल हरो हमरो हिमाल हरो बनाऊँ भाई। And I love you enough to tell you the truth. मत तबले इतनी सारे प्रेम करने कर सुकी मत तबले ये सत्य तो बताऊँ देशु। Are you my enemy because I tell you the truth? सत्य बताए कि मत तबले मला अपना सत्रु ठन्नू वाला। No, surely not. सत्य ठन्नू उन्ना वाला। Friends, repent. साथी रोप। Greetings, friends. Up here on my uh, rooftop here in Kathmandu, Nepal. It can be kind of a nice place to come and relax from all the chaos. I hope you enjoyed the videos of the preaching that was done and the scriptures that went out. It's quite an amazing thing to see. What we've endeavored to do is uh, follow Jesus' example, the examples that were set forth by him, his disciples. Paul the Apostle. In uh, Mark 6, he tells us that whenever he sent out his disciples two by two, they went everywhere in obedience. They went everywhere and preached the word that men should repent. My friends, this message cannot be changed. Now, I would hope that these videos encourage you to preach that same message in whatever method that God has given you to go out and share the gospel in your sphere of influence. The Lord's done a great work in the hearts of men, and He continues to do that until that final day. As men are perishing, let us be bold and preach the gospel everywhere. Please pray for us as we continue to strive for the gospel. Amen.